What up guys, welcome back to the channel. Back out in the shop and uh, I'm gonna get today's video started with a huge thank you. The channel's not huge yet, um, but we've been growing steadily. And here a while back, we made it over 1500 subscribers and we've recently gotten up to, I think 1600 and like 30 something, maybe 40 currently. Um, but I just wanted to give you guys a huge thank you. Thank you for following. I know I'm always kind of all over the place. I'm not like most everybody else's channels where I'm constantly following something. I've just, I've got so many projects and they're scattered all over the place. So I'm always doing something different. Just wanted to say thank you for joining the channel, following along. We're gonna keep doing this. This isn't going anywhere. I'm gonna continue to do this for probably a really long time. Yeah, just huge thanks. And let's get into today's video. <laughs> All right, guys, so we got a, p a package in the mail for the new blood stain engine. And these are probably the nicest part of that engine, I'm gonna be honest with you. But let's show you what we got. All right, so we picked up a little package from LPC, uh, Liberty Performance Products. Huge thanks to Lance and the guys over at R&D Performance getting me set up with these. Um, I've been looking to try and find a set of these. Nobody had them in, in stock except for LPC. Um, and like I just was kind of trying them, wanted to try them. Look at these units. These are a stainless steel roller tip rocker. Bolt down design. So they'll go in stock location. I don't know if these will require a stock size push rod or not, um, as far as length goes, but we'll find out whenever we go put them in the engine and then we'll do some measuring. But come with the bolts and stuff. They're underneath there. So I can pick this up out of here without dropping them, maybe. Oh, man, those are nice units. I believe those are uh, $2.99 on their website. And like I said, they're the only ones that have these in stock. Yeah, it comes with just hardware to bolt it down. So, super pumped about these. Um, trying to give this little 5.3 every chance to live and spin its RPM little heart out. I probably should have put ARP rod bolts in it, but man, these things are sick. Anyways, we're gonna get these put on the motor and uh, measure push rod length. Well, we got the uh, five three set down in there. I got the rocker arms installed. Um, I went through and checked push rod length, and one thing I noticed with those rocker arms, they were drop in. So we put seven four hundred push rods in there, torqued everything down, put the covers on it, got it set down in here. Got the bell housing bolted up to the transmission. And then the motor mounts are bolted to the block, but that's as far as we are right now. Gotta get a old crank sensor or cam sensor to plug that hole there. And then I need a, a new O-ring for these ICT billet spacers. And then uh, I'll get underneath the car. I'll go ahead and do the uh, converter spacing, get the converter bolted up and get the starter in it, get the wire in for the starter. And then once that's done, then I can come up top and just start plugging away on everything up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start getting all that stuff done so we can try and get this thing fired up and see what this 5.3 is gonna sound like. We're uh, gonna try and prime this thing up, see if we can get some oil pressure built. Then we'll try and do a first fire up on pump gas and just see what it sounds like. Got it primed, only took about 30 seconds of cranking. Um, I don't know what to expect because it's got a couple open ports. Um, I probably need to do a TPS auto set to make sure it idles decent. It's, uh, Let's start that up. Now let's see if we can do a auto set. Just to make sure. Wizard. No, wizard. Make sure the ignition's on. Engine not started. Twice. All the way down. start and successful okay moment of truth let's see here it, like I said it's got some vacuum leaks and stuff but uh let's just see what it does iron hole Oh, 
Probably take a second to get the lifters pumped up. <laughs> Take two. Did I forget something? That or I got the coils plugged in wrong, which is a very good possibility. Hmm. Interesting. Um, grounds and power's hooked up. Coils, injectors are plugged in, right? Yep, grounds are hooked up. Yeah, let's try again. One more crank in here. Holy fuel pressure. Oh, that sensor's different. Mm, I put a sensor in it that's not the right one. Uh oh. Fire in the pipe. Sounds weird. Hmm. Battery sounds a little low. Sound good. Hmm. That's got to be coils. Or something's not plugged in right. That's what I get for just unplugging them all willy nilly. I feel like that's right. Maybe I need to sit in the car. Maybe it just wants me to sit inside of it. Huh. Interesting. <clears throat> yeah, it sounds like timing's off. That's weird. Oh, I know why. Because I got a timing offset in this thing. That's why. Yeah, we need to undo that. Um, ignition type. We're GM58. Oh yeah, smells awesome. Okay, let's cycle back on. I forgot to turn the timing offset off. Let's see what it does now.
It lives. She lives. It lives. Yeah, so the timing offset was definitely the uh, problem why I wouldn't want to start. So now that we got a crank collector in the right spot, welding in place, it's good. Got some vacuum leaks got to fix. Um, need to redo the charge pipe here. I need to make sure the hood fits, may not fit. So we might end up having to take the throttle body and flip it upside down, which I won't hate because I definitely don't like seeing that. But uh, yeah, I guess we'll uh, do a couple of those things, get back into it and uh, show you what it sounds like once we get all the piping and stuff done, let it heat cycle and then we'll burp the coolant and get it outside and really listen to it so it's not echoing inside the garage. All right, so I went ahead, test fit the hood and the throttle body actually does hit the hood. So we're gonna have to uh, take the throttle body, flip it upside down, which is fine because I need to put gaskets and sealer and stuff on the elbow and the throttle body because uh, there's an adapter here for the Wilson's uh, elbow to use this style throttle body. And uh, it does kind of look dorky like that. So it should look a little bit better when I flip it the other direction. And uh, I got a couple little fuel leaks. The return line's leaking there. Uh, one thing I did notice last night was the fuel pressure is really high. I rescaled that sensor, started it up again, and it's still like as low as it'll go is like 60 pounds. Actually, it's probably like 65 because it's like 63 pounds with vacuum going to it. So pull the vacuum off, it'll actually go higher. So fuel pressure is way high, which I don't understand because everything's the exact same except for the intake manifold. Same injectors, same regulators, same lines. You know sizes and everything the only thing that's different are the rails so i don't know if there's an issue there maybe the inside diameter of these rails is a little smaller than the edelbrock ones i don't know maybe um, causing pressure to be up so might have to uh, pull the regulator part and drill a hole out inside of it to get it to return more fuel same thing i had to do on the dart i had to do it on the bk and stuff um so might have to do that but i am going to get the throttle body off, get it flipped upside down. And then we're gonna start trying to uh, modify the uh, intercooler pipe from here to there and uh, get that all buttoned up. I got antifreeze in it. I gotta change some brake lines cause I put different coilovers on the front of it, which I don't think I videoed any of that, but I put QA1 double adjustables on it. And I took these old, these are vintage. I don't even like, these things are retro as hell. Um, and it's funny you can see the adjuster look at the difference because they were blown out so they were at different heights um but i did put some double adjustables on it i need to raise the ride height a little bit because where i want it to set they're actually bottoming out inside the coilover so that ain't gonna work um even though i want it to set low it's not gonna be able to to do it safely and properly so i'm gonna have to raise the front of it up a little bit which sucks but it is what it is um i don't want to destroy a pair of coilovers from having it bottom out just sitting here um but yeah so i'm gonna get into flipping that over and we're gonna start doing this charge pipe all right guys so we got it all pretty much buttoned up i got the pipe re-welded up and uh got it sitting in some fresh paint you can kind of tell it's a little glossy here and then everything else is satin because it's going to dry as a satin finish but got that all done the car runs i did fix my uh, fuel pressure issue that was because the fitting going in the side of the regulator actually went too far in was hitting the spring and was keeping the pressure up so pulled that out um, fixed that and uh, got that all situated but the car runs now we just got to put it back together button up a couple other little things and uh, we can get this thing out and test uh, we, it. Like I said, we got it running. Everything seems to be good to go. It's got good oil pressure. Um, we will need to change the oil now that I've heat cycled it, got it full of water and everything. So we'll need to uh, change the oil on it again and button up a couple other little things before we can get it out and test it. But here in a couple weeks, there is a, um, there is a test session going on down in Rogersville, Missouri. I think we're gonna take the twin turbo 48 dart we're gonna take it down and I'm gonna to attempt to take this as well. Um, I may end up just taking it down there since we have a track rental coming up two weeks to follow that. Um, I may just take it down to Rogersville and do some shakedown stuff just with pump gas in it. I'll do like some pump 93 and just shake it down and see how it does. And uh, 
you know, obviously we can take it up a little bit and boost and just, just see what it does on pump gas for now. Um, and then once everything's solid, I know everything's good to go. And then we can throw some E85 in it and really turn the wick up on this thing and uh, see how fast we can get this little stock bottom in 5.3 to go. So, but that's gonna do it for today's video, guys. Thanks for coming along with this whole journey. And uh, hopefully we can uh, go to some races with this thing this year and uh, we'll bring you all along with us. So thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the next one.